It, it's not about mobility. It is about grabbing additional revenue. We, we do have mobility challenges in Montgomery County, and we're not going to face them by looking to your pockets every time we need to build a new road. We need to be leveraging every dollar we can outside uh, of our property tax dollars. Thank you. Would you like another question again? No, I, I've, got it. I've got it. I will tell you, I am concerned about um, the traffic down on 249, and I understand the need for the road. I really do. I do not and am not in favor of it being towed. I have fought against tow roads even in Comal County. Now, with that said, I will tell you the, the solution that we did, because we were faced with that exact similar situation, so I have experience in this. And what we did to make sure that we did not obtain a tow road, but we gave the our citizens the road they needed now, was that we actually loaned TxDOT the money. Because TxDOT, as, as you've seen in, certain, in, in a lot of the um, online videos and in commissioner's court, and the testimony that was given, they say, well, yes, if, if it's not a toll road, then guess what? How are you going to fund it? If it's not a toll road, then it goes back into the hopper. So when it's funded, then it will come up. Well, what we did in Como County is we loaned TxDOT the money. And then when the road came up, they actually paid us back. So guess what? No toll road. You get the roads you need now, and that's the out-of-the-box thinking that you get from Greg Park. Anybody that don't think 249 is a mobility issue has not been around Montgomery County or Magnolia very long at all. Right. 249 is a desperately needed road. It will be a toll road for 3.6 miles about a $63 million construction job. It can be done and we'll be driving on the road by 2019, the late uh, last quarter of 2019 or the first quarter of 2020. Or we can wait for, for TxDOT to do this and we can wait another 10 or 12 years and hopefully they will build the road. So 249 is, is a, a road that will relieve traffic not only around Magnolia, we'll have People from Harris County, we'll have people from Grimes County, you've got people from Brazos County, you've got people from Montgomery County, Waller County that will be using that road to pay for the road. We sell revenue bonds to pay for, to pay for the road, and those are paid back through the tolls that the, that the toll road generates. That's the way to build this road and get this road built now so we can be driving on this road and leave the uh, relieve congestion in and around Magnolia within the next two, two and a half years. Long as uh, 
47. I've been in the private sector since I was 14 when it worked for me. My mom put me and said, hey, look, you need school clothes, you need to go work for me. So I, you know, that's the kind of experience I bring, but not only government experience, but honestly, my government experience accounts for 10 years out of the 47 years I've been alive and since 14 we've worked. So most of the rest of that has been in private sectors and in project management to boot. So those, that level of experience uh, is important because we do need change in Montgomery County. We need change and it is, it is time and I'm, I believe I'm the one to lead that change. Um, I know I'm going to mention his name, but I'll tell you, I believe Mr. Rodney is a wonderful man. <laughs> I believe he's a wonderful man. I just think it's time to take Precinct 2 to the next level. And I'm the person to take it to the next level. Well, as I said earlier, I didn't just show up in Montgomery County. I grew up in Montgomery County. And I love Montgomery County. And what makes me the best qualified for the job? I've been doing it since, uh, since uh, 2001, when I was hired as precinct operations manager for Precinct 2. I've been, I've been handling the budget, the equipment, the materials. I've done it day-to-day uh, -day operations for 12 years before I was elected to, uh, county commissioner. In my first term as county commissioner, I've got about 13 road projects from our bond issue, either on the ground or in the plan or in the design phase. That, and four of those will be driving on those before March the 1st or the, or the end of March of this year. So when I said I was going to improve mobility, I've done that. I've got the road line project uh, underway. I, I, I was on the, uh, we voted a 20% homestead exemption. I was instrumental in that. Commissioner Nowak came to court with a 10% homestead exemption. I told him right then I needed time to look at it to talk about it, to question it, and that's what I did. He came back the next court wanted a 15%. I recommended a 20% homestead exemption, and that's what we've got. So I appreciate your support. I ask for your vote, and I thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you. Okay, and the third and final question, um, Mr. Dawson again, we have what would you do to make sure all residents in your precinct know their voices are heard, even if they have opposing views to yours? Absolutely. It's one of the challenges that I think Precinct 2 has faced over the last few years is Precinct 2 is not getting equal representation from Magnolia to River Plantation. It, it, it's just a fact. Uh, we, we do not see uh, we, do, we do not see what we need from the commission on the east side. It, all of Precinct 2 deserves that representation. It needs to be about making all of Precinct 2. It's, it's got to be one of the fastest precincts growing in Montgomery County. Everyone in the precinct deserves that representation. So we've got to do a better job of outreaching, not just representing one small portion of, of, the, of the precinct. Uh, now, to, to that, I, I do want to touch on the homestead exemption. Uh, we did get a 20% homestead exemption, and that's... We did it. It was about time. But unfortunately, with appraisal rates going up, it's going to be washed out pretty quickly if we don't do a better job of controlling our spending and managing our tax rate. And while it was voted to a 20%, it was after it was voted against. Uh, it was said in a newsletter a week ago that, you know, I only had one day's notice. Well, unfortunately, it takes three, there's three day notice requirement. So either it was unprepared to vote. Or, or didn't want us to have a 20% homestead exemption. We need people that will show up to commissioners who are prepared to fight for you, the taxpayers, every day, every quarter. So, thank you. The question was, what will I do to make sure that all area, all individuals? Okay. Well, for me, I think it's more a, a point of talking and communication. Holding town halls in every area of the precinct I think is important so that individuals get a chance to speak. Being, uh, actually being involved, um, I've actually you know, done United Way and some other things to that effect. Being involved in the community is, is, is also one way. But having a liaison to the community to get to each individual subdivision and making sure we have those point of contacts with them 
and sitting down and attending the subdivision uh, meetings. That's important. That's, those things, tangible things we can do to actually make sure those voices are heard. Of course, not only an open door policy, that's, that goes without saying, but also being seen. You know, I, I know I may look all debonair, but I don't always dress like this. And that's a good thing because, guess what? You can interact with people more personal when you're out there talking to them and you're not dressed in a suit and things of that effect. Come on, guys. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not, okay. So, with that said, being more, uh, of, of course, like I mentioned, town halls, um, being a community leader out there and actually getting down and, and talking to those individuals and being um, going to the subdivision meetings in each part of the precinct. Not just Magnolia or not just the Woodlands, but all. Because I don't actually live in the Woodlands or Magnolia. I live in South Carolina, near River Plantation. That, that deserves representation as well. 30 seconds. Okay, well, I'll give you that. <laughs> well, I do go to homeowners meetings. As a matter of fact, I'm going to River Plantation on January the 25th. I go every year. I go to 12, 18 of these every year, all over the place. <laughs> and, and if someone's going to say that River Plantation is not represented, just go ask them how fast we got their subdivision cleaned up after I. Ask anybody if we're not accessible. I'm out there every day, somewhere, somehow, talking to folks, visiting with folks, taking care of problems, taking care of business. That's what it's all about. I know where the roads are. I know where the problems are. I've been there. I've been doing it for 17 years. So I know where the problems are. I know who the right people to talk to. I, too, sit on HGAC. So I go down there once a month and fight the big guys like Harris County and Houston for the money that we can get here in Montgomery County. I do that every month. So I know where we're at, I know where we need to be going, I know how to get there, and I want a chance to do that. And I appreciate y'all's support, and thank you very much. Wow, this Montgomery has some great candidates. So, I want to remind you, your opinion, go to the polls. You have a lot of great choices. 